Hello and welcome to Dango's 8R Podcast. This week we're talking about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the episode Ted. I'm Paul. I'm Dave. I'm Justin. This episode originally aired December 8th, 1997, which would be the last episode airing before Christmas. Episode attracted 6.1 million viewers. In this episode, Buffy's mother Joyce introduces her new friend, Ted. A salesman. Mm, he tail a rather close friend. We're gonna get into that. Yeah. He tells Buffy that he's been seeing Joyce for quite some time now. Buffy becomes uncomfortable with Ted's 1950s sitcom mannerisms and is not impressed by his offer of miniature golf. That night, Buffy beats a vampire to an unusually bloody pulp before beating it, worrying Giles that something is troubling her. That was the time to stake the vampire. Buffy? <laughs> Buffy asks Angel for his take on things. He says that her mother needs a man in her life and that she should give him the benefit of the doubt. The golf outing goes poorly when Buffy tries to cheat out of sight of the others. Ted notices and threatens to slap her. Buffy talks her way into Ted's workplace where an envious co-worker tells her that he is an unbeatable salesman they have nicknamed The Machine. She also learns that he is making plans for a wedding in two months' time. At dinner, Ted denies the engagement, but confesses to Joyce that he has hopes they will. Buffy slips out for some slang, and on her return finds Ted has read her diary. He threatens to tell Joyce about the Slayer, unless she toes the line. Buffy defies him and is slapped. In the resulting brawl, Ted is knocked down the stairs, and Joyce declares him dead when she cannot find a pulse. Mm. The day after a talk with the police, Buffy is in a haze of guilt. Willow, Xander, and Cordelia dig deeper into Ted's life, discovering Ted's cookie cookies are drugged. Cordelia finds Ted has had four wives since 1957, all of whom have disappeared. That night, while Giles patrols, Sunnydale High School teacher Jenny Callender surprises him and apologizes for avoiding him. A vampire attacks, and Jenny accidentally shoots Giles with a crossbow. Yeah. Giles, only slightly injured, takes the bolt out of his own body and uses it to stake the vampire. Buffy finds a reanimated Ted in her room. They fight again, and upon cutting him, Buffy discovers that Ted is a robot. Ted knocks Buffy unconscious and escapes to find Joyce, but the damage he has sustained in the fight has left him erratic. Ted confronts and astonishes Joyce, but he malfunctions as... But as he malfunctions, he reveals his true intentions. As Joyce resists, Ted becomes violent and knocks her out. Buffy then awakens and knocks Ted out with a frying pan, killing him. Meanwhile, the Scooby gang investigates Ted's bunker, which is all decorated in the 1950s style. Xander finds Ted's previous four wives all dead. The gang returns to school the next day with Buffy cleared of all charges and discuss their discoveries about Ted. Apparently, the real Ted was a sick but brilliant uh, inventor in the 1950s whose wife left him. In desperation, he built a robot version of himself. The robot uh, kidnapped Ted's wives or Ted's wife and held her captive in his bunker until she died. The robot then sought out other women resembling Ted's dead wife and repeated the process until meeting Joyce. So that's what happened in this episode. Where did he get the technology to build himself a robot in the 1950s? Um, the Hellmouth. That's not a decent. That's not an answer. <laughs> that like even with those sorts of things, that's the like out of everything, this is the only one time that's not a decent excuse. How did they get the technology to build Moloch? There was a it, computer it, company for all that sort of stuff. We still don't have robots that are that good. No. Like yeah, twenty years time. later. I'm thinking that was more like a. T-1000 or T-1000, whatever, like, type of cybernetic life form type thing, except weaker. It could have been, like, a T-800. Arnie was a T-800. <laughs> anyway. Well, it's the, not able to, like, take it's a It's not liquid shape metal. Or, yeah, no. Mm. But the best answer you're going to get is Hellmouth. Uh, right. In most cases with the episode, we can accept that. Whenever it starts dealing with these sorts of issues, it's just... Uh, but as it is, showing the dark power of nerddom. Sure. Just wait until a later season. The... Anyway. Uh, so we get to, at the beginning of the episode, Buffy gets home. 
um, with Xander and Willow in tow, and goes to unlock the front door and finds that it's already open. Yeah, she goes kinda... in to investigate after hearing um, Joyce drop a wine glass and discovers Joyce and Ted in the kitchen. Yeah. And Buffy's face is perfect. It's this. They do this close up shot, and it's just like she's got this like, the fuck. <laughs> That's kind of the typical reaction to seeing your parents getting back into dating again. It's pretty great. I also love how Willow is talking about how she loves her 9-gig hard drive. I would have killed somebody for a 9-gig hard drive in 1997. (laughs) 9 gigs in 1997 would have been massive. That would have been something that typical... The cybernetic people... Nah, no. Well, let's see. I would have had, like, I don't know... Maybe a 500 megabyte drive of or you, sorts. You like might have had a gig. Had... I think I had a gig in I don't know. Back in like early or mid 90s or something or late 90s. You might have had a gig. A, I feel like a gig would have been standard then. Maybe. I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up, but I didn't. Mm. Uh, okay, so um, Ted offers Willow this like upgrade for her computer, and she makes this squealing sound. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually like that's the sound she makes when she's speechless with geeker joy. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. <laughs> and it's adorable. It was really funny. And then of course Xander doesn't bother having his suspicions about it, mostly because of the food. Yes, Let's this episode see. Xander is entirely motivated by his stomach. Yeah. Yep. Apparently. As he is a lot actually. Uh, yeah, so Buffy's fighting one uh, a vampire in the oh, yeah, graveyard, just... and Giles she's like just beating the crap out of it, and Giles is like, "I believe, I believe it's taking time." Buffy, <laughs> don't I you think, think? I think you're good. <laughs> so Buffy it's sits just... down and she starts complaining to Giles about how vampires come into your life and all of this, and he's like, "Buffy, I believe the sub sub uh, this is." The subtext here is rapidly becoming text. Yeah. <laughs> which is a great line. Uh, uh, it's so good. Well, she needs to vent, and I suppose there could be worse ways. Okay. Um, so, I forget exactly what Xander says, but he says something really stupid. And he's like, well, Freud would have said the exact same thing. Uh, Except maybe without the dance. Ah, uh, yes, when <laughs> Buffy starts bringing up her concerns to Willa and Xander, they are still kind of within the cloud of, oh, Ted's amazing. Why is it that you don't like him? Yes. I love how they actually, like, plant the seeds of why they all like Ted. Because you can notice, Buffy never eats anything Ted makes. No? So yeah, true. Yeah, really. And everybody else does. It's, it's a cool little thing mm-hmm. that they remember to, like, follow through on. But then, of course, it also keeps kind of a realistic sort of point to it where, sure, it's not really great to see that sort of thing at first, that sort of stuff. And Buffy's concerns of her mother seeing other people and not seeing her father in that sort of respect. Yeah, well, we, we don't see a whole lot of Hank in the series. Mm, true. Uh, but still, dad. it still has that sort of concern for it. Yeah. Okay, so Buffy comes to school the day after she goes to deal with the cops and she's wearing the overalls. Yes. The overalls are not a good look. No, they're not. Well, I think it's just kind of a case of she has a lot of things in her mind and actually looking like a typical teenager going to school was not one of them. The overalls are a bad look. Yeah, I agree with that. (laughs) I'm like, why are you wearing overalls? What's with this? It's like, you're not a farmer. You have no excuse. (laughs) No. It's like, why do you even have those? I love Xander has a line. He's like, he says uh, to Cordelia, I sometimes like things that aren't good for me. Ah, uh, yes. Right in her face. Ah, uh, yes. The <laughs> wonderful also, relationship with Xander and Cordelia. It's so good. We also find out that Cordelia is pro-fascism. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course. It is good. Uh, yeah, so Buffy ends up killing, killing Tad <laughs> after he is in her room and reads like her diary and finds out about the Slayer. And she's got the holy water and... All that. Yeah. Well, I mean, he attacked first, didn't he? No, nah, he yes. did. Yeah. He hit her it's first. Like, like yes. I was waiting for that, and she proceeds to beat the shit. So, up. this is a problem. Because you'll notice yeah. how Buffy doesn't bruise after she gets hit. Nah. Yeah. Now. That was the thing that was mentioned. 
Ted, granted, is not a vampire or a demon. Mm. I mean, he is a robot, but he doesn't have, like, enhanced strength as far as we know. Mm. But Buffy he gets, like... To detect that he would be metallic in some way? He had, like, skin... Like, yeah. He's a he's a Terminator, Justin. Fine. <laughs> a Terminator as far made as you in the fifties or something. It's time travel. <laughs> Haven't you ever watched Terminator movies? Yeah. Anyway, let's move past the. He's a robot that was built in the nineteen fifties. And you're that's, concerned about that. Point. That's the least of the problems with this episode. There aren't any problems. The concern you want to No, okay, up. so Buffy doesn't bruise from this, but we'll see in later episodes where she will get bruised when she fights vampires. Mm. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, only Possib- logic do you take. It, I <laughs> think it's else. kind of a point of either at that sort of particular point in the series, it's like, oh, it's fine, we can keep her looking like that until they move over to a different section of things or there's a particular shoot where things get a little bit too physical and she does get physically hit and there is a bit of bruises like ooh, we're going to have to work with that yeah so um ted comes back ted gets killed by buffy because he's a robot and now she doesn't have to feel bad about killing a robot well with her not knowing that the concerns that she kind of goes through were fairly decent. Of, yeah. oh shoot, I'm the Slayer, and I went ahead and killed a person. Now you are a murderer. <laughs> no, see, she isn't... She clear like... Mm, no, <laughs> I have so many problems with this. See, because she wouldn't... You couldn't convict her of murder. Because mm. she has a legitimate case for self-defense. Mm-hmm. As I think it sort of is... manslaughter. I know. think as it sort of sits with most everything, the police and w- investigation that sort of went into things actually sort of went fairly decently. From how I sort of saw it, from seeing the entire thing played out, I was like, yeah, Buffy isn't probably going to be convicted of manslaughter or any sort of thing like that. Well, it she w- can be. <laughs> but there is still the opening that... The concern would be open that uh, Ted would have brought abuse upon her, but... Yeah, she would have legitimate... Like, okay, so Ted hit her, although she doesn't have bruising, she can mm-hmm. easily prove that Ted was in her room, because his fingerprints would be all over the place. Numb. And throughout her diary, but yeah. then she would have to submit the diary as evidence, so that's just great. <laughs> yeah. She's a teenage girl who writes About stories. About vampires? Yeah. That's not, like... That's not damning. Oh, hello, Twilight fandom. Oh, don't get me started on Twilight. We're yeah, let's Twilight see. into this. Yeah, let's well, save that yet. for another time. Maybe next episode. No. No? Yeah. <laughs> I love Buffy's line where after, like, when her and Joyce are sitting on the front porch, and she's like, he's on the scrap heap. Of life. <laughs> <laughs> I think I dodged that. <laughs> Uh, wonderful dodging skills. Uh, at the end of the episode, Will was like, the sad thing is, you know, the real Ted must have been a genius and she's going on it. But he's like, you didn't keep any pieces, did you, Willow? And she's like, well, well not any big ones. Oh, Willow, <laughs> you and your dirtiness. It will possibly get us into danger one day. Of course nah. not. Alrighty, so overall, what did you guys think of this episode? Despite the concerns you brought up of, oh dear goodness, this episode is terrible, horrible things are going to happen to my psyche, it wasn't anything too bad. For the basics of the story kind of going along, it kind of hit all the dots and it didn't hit any sort of cringe bits that I was worried it was going to hit, but eh, on whole it turned out to be alright. Nothing spectacular with what we got, but for filler, it wasn't anything too bad. Okay. Justin? I do have to agree with David. It wasn't terribly cringy or anything, but it was kind of a mess in terms of, like, um, a robot that was made in the 50s, and then apparently it's, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's an okay mess of an episode. Okay, so... The major problems I have with this episode are that it's so fucking cringy for me. 
the opposite. Like, the everything Ted does and says, I just go like, oh! Well, of course. Mm. But it's not like... You better I, watch your mouth, young lady. Or something. I'm gonna like, that face you I like cringe humor, but this is just like the wrong type of cringe. And it's like, casting John Ritter in that role is perfect casting. No, I definitely have to agree. If they would have written the character differently, this would have been a lot better. How if, so? If they wouldn't have written him... Like, so hard to be that, like, 1950s sitcom dad, and they had written him to be more current, like, not as, I don't know the right word, but not as just, like, annoying. <laughs> Modern at the time? Yeah. Still kind of dad potential sort of thing. Kind yeah, but, like, not sort of as... 1950s? I, yeah. Mm. It would have worked a lot better, and John Ritter would work in that, because... The most uh, popular thing people had seen him about th- uh, up to that point is Three's Company. Ah. Mm. So he would have really worked in that, and I think that would have been a better way of doing it. I just found his acting just to be kind of amusing. Well, he's he's playing it for comedy. Well, of course. Yes. Like, this is obviously not meant to be too terribly... Uh, too tense. I don't know. It's like... Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, he is technically fighting to win over Buffy's mom in a way, but also going to end up killing her in the end. Yes. That's the main threat. (laughs) Yes. There's only so much a robot can do. So, while I have issues with the episode, it's not the worst we're going to get. No, this wasn't the worst episode. And there are worse ones to come. Okay, sure. worst things is for the future. I mean, we're going to get an episode called Beer Bad. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, Does that make me laugh? It's not good, <laughs> but that's a ways in the future. Mm. Okay. So, is there a smoke bad episode? <laughs> no. Damn it. <laughs> there is an episode called Double Meat Palace, though. Oh, dear. That involves Buffy going to work at a fast food place. Oh, more oh, so, okay. dear. <laughs> but she that's not until, like, season six. She gets a job. Yep. She do. That isn't killing vampires. <gasps> when it <gasps> actually <gasps> pays the bills. <laughs> okay, so do you have a score for this episode out of ten? I'd say six and a half-ish, in my case. Okay. Yeah, roughly six-ish. Okay, I'm at, like, a four. I don't particularly like this episode. If it were up to me, I would have just skipped it. <laughs> Too much cringe in your case. Yes. So, um, we don't normally do this, but I have a couple of quick little facts about this episode that I just mm-hmm. thought were kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, John Ritter's father, Tex Ritter, was also an actor, and he worked with Joss Whedon's father, Tom Whedon, on a couple of projects. Okay. So, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, this also is cited uh, by Alison Hannigan as one of her favorite episodes, largely because of the... Pre- uh, participation of John Ritter. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> yes, I do have alternate uh, international titles. Unfortunately, there's nothing terribly interesting. Essentially just his name. It's basically Ted, except for in French, it's the fiancé. And there's no real music in this episode either. Yeah, no. Not that no. I noticed. They might be saving that for later. Yeah. <laughs> they might blow their budget on a couple of songs later this season. Just like, da da da, just continue and write episodes for stuff. Well, quality is subjective, Justin. Sure. But mm. they might be going after some, like, bigger Big name names. artists. Yeah, okay. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, what, uh, our next episode will be Bad Eggs. As in the Scooby Crew? Well, in the principal's eyes, I guess. So, Bad Eggs. Bad Eggs is an episode where Buffy and the Scoobies are going to have to pretend to be parents and look after eggs. Oh, so the basic sort of they're, sex ed thing. They're also going to have to deal with vampire cowboys named the Gorch Brothers. Yeehaw! <laughs> Yeehaw! What? Yes, vampire cowboys. Don't think too hard about it. Uh, It'll be explained next week, kind of. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, Justin, yeehaw. That's all I keep thinking of. Vampires, cowboys don't generally mix too well, but I don't know. We'll see. I've uh, come to suck your blood, Varvit. Varvit? Alrighty, I think that's going to be it for this week. I'm Paul. I did not found. <laughs> He's dead. Ted's dead. I'm, I'm Justin. Very good. <laughs>